Welcome back to The Lead. I'm Jake Tapper, and we begin this hour with our health lead explosive growth of new coronavirus infections and hospitalizations throughout much of the United States. Today, the health of the world, the head of the World Health Organization giving this blunt assessment, the pandemic is, quote, not even close to being over, he said. At least 46 of the United States are seeing surges in cases or holding steady. Only four states are showing a decline, an alarming spike since this time last week. And the consequences could prove even deadlier. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar telling me that the window to take action and slow the spread is closing. An ominous warning, as at least 14 governors are pausing or even reversing steps in their reopening plans. Right now, there are more than 2.5 million confirmed coronavirus cases in the United States, with the death toll nearing 126,000 lives lost. The U.S., with less than 5% of the world's population, has around 25% of the world's coronavirus deaths, according to official numbers. No way to spin this is anything other than an abject failure by the Trump administration and many state governments to keep their people safe. CNN's Nick Watt is in hard-hit California. Nick, the state's Democratic governor, Gavin Newsom, saying moments ago that California has seen a 45% increase in cases that have tested positive over just the last week. Jake, the news is not good from out here in California. We are setting new records, unwanted records. The positivity rate is rising. The average new case count every day is rising. The number of people in the hospital is rising. In fact, the governor said that over the past two weeks, the numbers in the hospital is up over 40 percent. So he's closing bars here in Los Angeles and six other counties. He has a bunch of counties on a watch list. He is, like other leaders around the country, pausing or rolling back on the reopening. Because of this, this, and this. We had to change the tube and if somebody that has no oxygen, he could have died. We are now hearing this. Arizona is on pause. We will continue to take action based upon the data. 14 states now pausing or tweaking their reopening plans. The window is closing for us to take action and get this under control. And in states that still won't mandate masks, some mayors now making that call in Nashville, Kansas City, Tupelo, and now Jacksonville, where the president had hoped to hold an unmasked convention later this summer. Is his no mask mantra now evolving? He encourages people to make whatever decision is best for their safety, but he did say to me he has no problem with masks and to do whatever your local jurisdiction requests of you. Meanwhile, long lines for tests in Florida, where the new case counts are now more than six times what they were a month ago. So South Florida's beaches will be closed again for the 4th of July. In only four small states are new case counts actually falling, while in these six states, COVID-19 hospitalizations are now at an all-time high. Bars across Texas have closed again. 46% of our positives were 20 to 30-year-olds, and we think that was as a direct result of uh, congregations in the bars. And infections among a younger crowd create a problem. What you're seeing is community-based spread where 20 to 40 percent of the people who are infected don't have any symptoms. So the standard classic paradigm of identification, isolation, contact tracing doesn't work no matter how good you are. Even in New York City, which is doing relatively well right now, Broadway will be dark now until next year. 2021. We need, say the experts, around 30 contact tracers per 100,000 people. CNN has learned that right now Florida has about seven, Arizona about five, and Georgia as few as two. Dr. Fauci now says he'd settle for a vaccine that's 70 to 75 percent effective, but maybe not everybody would be willing to take it, making herd immunity. Unlikely, and that's one of the reasons why we have to make sure we engage the community as we're doing now. Now, up until this point, the message on masks has really been one of kind of love thy neighbor, wear one to protect somebody else. But now Dr. Burks from the White House Coronavirus Task Force says that there is also signs to suggest that they do partially protect the wearer. And she is also warning young people, you could be out there, you could be asymptomatic. So 
If you're saying hi to grandma and grandpa, wear a mask. Jake. All right, Nick Watt in Los Angeles, thanks so much. Joining me now is CNN Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Sanjay, you heard HHS Secretary Azar tell me yesterday that the window to get this virus mm -hmm. under control is closing. How, how long do we have or might it already be too late? Well, you know, it depends how you define too late. I mean, I think action is always going to be better than inaction at this point. But there's no question, Jake, as we've been talking about you and I since February and March, that the earlier you act, the better. I mean, if we're thinking about this as a metaphor of a body and you're treating a cancer or something, you want to treat early. We've been waiting and there's been spread of this, this, this infection now through the country. So it's going to require uh, treatment. It's going to require more aggressive treatment in some areas versus others. You know, I think that at this point it almost becomes an existential question. What are we willing to tolerate in terms of people actually getting sick and possibly dying before we start imposing some of these, 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 uh, these actions, Jake? We know it needs to be done. We've seen it around the world. We have evidence that it works. We just need to apply some of these things here uniformly across the country. And Sanjay, take a look at this graphic. On the left side of the screen is the map showing the case trends in the United States. Right now, 31 states have increased levels of, of new coronavirus cases, 15 states holding steady. Only four are trending down. Now compare that to the map on the right, which is from Memorial Day about a month ago. It's a stunning difference. It's worse now, much more red today, many more cases increasing. If, if you stay with this metaphor, Jake, of, of looking at those maps as the body, you know, the, the disease is, is more widespread now. Where it was localized before, you had certain things that you could have done in localized areas to bring it down. I look at that map, Jake, and if I, I see the entire country now at risk, yeah, you know, because people do travel around. We're, we are the United States, but if you start to get these significant increases in places around the country, a 102% increase in Florida, 78% in Georgia, where I am, you know, Texas, Arizona, 27% over the last seven days. These are significant increases, and we're likely starting to see some exponential growth. I don't think you can look at any part of the country and say that it's not vulnerable now. That's, that's, that's the tough news. Because of what's happening in some of these other places, it affects the entire country. At the height of the virus, hospitals were overwhelmed. There was a desperate need for ventilators mm -hmm. and PPE, personal protective equipment. Thousands of Americans were dying every day. Here's what uh, HHS Secretary Azar said to me yesterday on State of the Union. Things are very different from two months ago. We now have three therapeutics. We have hospital capacity. We have reserves of personal mm -hmm. protective equipment. Uh, we're, we're speeding our way towards, uh, towards having vaccines. Um, so it's a very different situation. Do you agree? Is it a very different situation right now? You know, in some ways, it's different. I, I think he's he's obviously doing what he should be doing, putting a positive spin on this, Jake. I mean, you know, the three the three therapeutics he's talking about, remdesivir, uh, that's one that does shorten the duration of uh, recovery a bit. Dexamethasone is a steroid medication for the sickest patients. Convalescent serum, I think, is the third therapeutic he's talking about. That hasn't been shown to be effective yet, but there's a lot of promise around that. They are making progress on a vaccine. It's We're not there yet. As far as personal protective equipment, I watched your interview. I thought that was a good, good follow-up that you had. The way they figure this out is they say, hey, look, let's look at the past five months and figure out which was the, the worst 30 days. And if we want to have a 90-day supply, we're going to multiply that 30-day worst window by three and see if we can have 90 days. Two, there's two issues. One is that when are you going to have that? that? That plan was for October, you know, during this possible second wave. Well, as you're showing from these maps, there may not be a second wave in the sense that we may not really get out of the first wave here. We're having a significant peak. The other issue is that the, the worst 30-day period over the last five months, we may supersede that. 30. We may have a, a worse period over the next couple of months. So are we going to have enough personal protective equipment? Miguel Marquez's piece out of Houston today shows these healthcare workers using PPE, switching them out several times a day get more and more patients coming to these hospitals. It's not clear to me that we're going to have enough of some of that basic equipment. I want to play for you what Dr. Fauci said about the prospect of a coronavirus vaccine. I doubt seriously that any vaccine will ever be 100% protected. The best we've ever done is measles, which is 97 to 98%.
effective. Um, oh, that would be wonderful if we get there. I don't think we will. I would settle for a 70, 75% effective vaccine because that would bring you to that level of would be herd immunity level. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the top infectious diseases expert, talking to our own Elizabeth Cohen. What do you, what do you make of that? Well, I mean, if it's a 70 to 75 percent effective vaccine and everyone takes it, that's going to be that's going to be a good thing. We will get to that herd immunity. I think the, the rest of that conversation uh, with Elizabeth basically was that right now you got about a third of the country in some of this polling that says that they are vaccine hesitant or they would they write out, come out and say they wouldn't take it, which means you're not going to get it to herd immunity from this. So, you know, one of two things has to happen. It's, it's simple math. Either it has to be a better vaccine has to be more protective or more people have to be taking this vaccine.